Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here I'm with uh, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hi, Tom. Hey, Al. And we have a special guest today, Ryan Knoll out of Phoenix, yeah, Arizona. Hey, Ryan, how are you today? Doing well. Doing well. Um, as good as we can do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan uh, owns a house cleaning service in Phoenix called Tidy Casa. Yes, and sir. He also uh, has a background. He is uh, a, a professional in the area of, of, of SEO. He did that back when he had a real job. <laughs> so he's going right. to be uh, talking uh, to us today and giving us a lot of insight from a from an insider's perspective. You know, he's uh, um, can tell us how we can can best use our time in, in marketing, just in general, and and how to every time. Every time. Every day, Ryan. I do this every day. There's an echo. Oh, we're well, just I getting... try to pull up the Facebook Live, and then <laughs> I never have it muted in the right way. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Make it easy. <laughs> every day. Well, two days out of the week. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Heather. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> okay. Uh, before we get too deep into this, I'm going to do my obligatory uh, sharing what's on our schedule for the rest of the week, because if I don't, we just might not get around to it. Um, I'm so proud of you for doing this. We, we, we get it right every once in a while. Yeah. So Ryan's with us uh, today. We're going to do uh, SEO for the win. What is that, like Jeopardy? What game show is that for the win? <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah. Sounds like Jeopardy, That's right? That's a thing now. Everybody, FTW, you know, for the oh, win. That was Hollywood Squares. That was Hollywood Squares. I don't know. Um, right. I don't you're before really you're dating yourself. Yeah. You are you really know what that dating yourself. You do the Hollywood Squares. Of, I, I do know what that is. Uh, I didn't really watch <laughs> it, but. You were like a really. <laughs> you didn't want to watch those old people talking about all the yeah. crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Leslie. Or more of a Bob Barker guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that's. Uh, I like Bob Barker. Price is right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he gave right. that up a while ago, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah I think I know so. it's, uh, is he still around? Yeah. Um, I think I so. Know. He's not doing the show anymore, so. Okay, so I was on Wheel of Fortune, so I'm a Pat Sajak fan. Oh, yeah. were you? Hey, Ernie. Was Pat, was Pat Sajak on it when you were there, or was it Chuck Woolery? Nope, it was Pat Sajak and Vanna White. So Vanna's been doing it. Vanna's probably still doing it, right? Y'all, she's been doing it forever. Why does she look exactly the same as when I was on that show 30 years ago? <laughs> Pat, Pat Sajak must have been, I mean, I'm, you know, Chuck Rollery did it for a while before Sajak came in. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Good memory, Tom. Boy, that <laughs> really know. is funny, though. Yeah. Day on TV when I was going to college, I'm pretty good. I mean, we can talk soap operas all day long if you want. <laughs> oh, <know>. gosh. <laughs> Let's not. Let's talk about what we're doing the rest of the week. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, Greg. We all know Matt Rick is. Matt's going to join us tomorrow. We're going to get us all updated on what's happening with Small Business Administration, PPP, and they've made, obviously, a bunch of changes there. So we're going to got to kind of take that around the horn. Um, who do we have Wednesday, Liz? Mm, Yusuf. So are you just afraid to say his name? Tom? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Yusuf is, is uh, afraid. Uh, Memetoglu. Memetoglu. He runs a really large house cleaning service out of uh, North Virginia, D.C. area, north of $5 million, uh, made bright. Um, he is, and, and plus, he's got a several several other businesses that, that he runs as well. Um, one of the more successful entrepreneurs you're ever going to meet. And he's going to share his experiences in terms of what he's been dealing with over the last several months in terms of how a really large cleaning service deals with the uh, this unprecedented event that, that that we're dealing with called COVID-19. Ryan, I don't know if you you ever uh, see many of these Facebook lives or not, but we're contractually obligated to get the word unprecedented in at least yeah. once every uh, did. Good every job, day. Tom. Nice and early. We don't yeah, have to worry about it now. We've got checked off the list. Chad, <laughs> Diana, and Henley are going to be with us Thursday, and they're going to be uh, sharing with us how they've diversified their business. And this is something that they actually had had done prior to COVID. They're in the pest control business as well as house cleaning. 
and uh, they're going to share, you know, how being diversified has has helped them through this unprecedented event. I'll keep that on account. Maybe use that later in the week. That's a that's a wheel of fortune thing, right? On a calendar gift certificate. Yeah. Uh, no, was it? Friday will be on the uh, fire, our rapid fire Q and A session. We have a really special special guest this coming up Friday. You have a have a hint for us, Liz. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> I do have one. I'll have to give it to you the, at the end because I can't remember what it is. Okay. Well, I'm sure it'll be good. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I know what it is. I remember. So these are initials that are associated with this person. TMC. Okay. That's right. Gonna have to noodle over that one. Yeah. Not her, it's not her name initials, but these are initials that are associated with her name. Okay. Oh, it's not. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Tom's like, hmm, I know who it is and I can't figure it out. I wrote Did it down. Don't look at this. Okay. I get it. I, I, you I, got I, it? I, okay. Connection. That's a, that's a legit, legit. Uh, that's totally legit. I always well, try to like sneak in something, you guys, that tells you a little bit about who they are, not just what they look like. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get to SEO because we can run out of time quick with, with this. This is a big topic. I know we're going to have a ton of questions from people too, Ryan. Cool. Yeah. So, well, like, how do we start out? When, when do should we be worried about SEO? The, some of the things that people constantly worry about is are, are these things. Like, what is SEO? Do I need it? Who does it for me? Can I do it myself? When do I start thinking about SEO? How do I know if it's working or not? Um, why don't we start, so why don't start just defining it? I know that we get confused between SEO and AdWords and just digital marketing in general. Yeah. SEO is kind of a specific thing. What is it? Yeah, they, they definitely don't make it easy. And then with all the all the marketers throwing as many, you know, uh, abbreviations and everything as they can with the SEO and PPC and all this other stuff to make it uh, twice as complicated as it needs to be. Um, when I was working at a marketing consulting firm, we had a thing where like almost everything had its own like abbreviation and they my, my boss would start throwing them out and then nobody would know and we'd all have to be like oh wait a minute like we're in the industry you just made that up like a <laughs> step back like, what, what what is that like that's oh, not, not real yeah that's not real you're just making it up um so that happens quite a lot so seo is very specifically search engine optimization uh, and how I kind of like to break that down, um, the, at the end of the day, what you want to do with search engine optimization is you want to rank higher when somebody searches for you in Google. Somebody types in house cleaning in Google, you want to pop up uh, towards the top of the list. The higher up you are, the better off you're going to be. Um, and it does get very complicated. And when SEO first started, you know, um, years ago with the first search engines came out, it was a lot more complicated. It was a lot easier to do. It was a lot cheaper to do. Now there's subcategories of SEO. So there's search engine optimization for organic SEO. And then there is local SEO, which is a whole different kind of thing, different ways to optimize. You're looking at different metrics. Um, so yeah, it gets it does tend to get uh, a little complicated if you don't know what you're doing, which also leaves a lot of small businesses open and vulnerable, in my opinion, to being taken advantage of by these uh, fast talking sales guys. And maybe yeah. they don't intend to do that, but it happens a lot. Um, well, you know, we have two questions up already, Ryan. You hadn't even started talking. We already had questions. I don't know if you can see the comments. They're usually on the right hand side of your screen oh, where yeah. it says private chat and live comments. Yeah, I'll, and, I'll the way up there. And the, and the reason why uh, these questions pop up is everybody feels the same way. It's like, we don't even know what it is. How do we know mm -hmm. if we're getting it? Is right. it working? What's the you know the budget stuff? So Lisa, I see Tom's got it. Yeah, we got, we got two questions hanging here. One, what should we be looking for? And the other one is what we expect to pay and what should we expect for the fee? Now, 
we can either talk about these now or we can set on these questions a little bit and you might be answering, you know, the explanation might be part of, of where you're going with this. What would you prefer? Yeah, no, actually it, it's kind of kind of leading into it. So I'm, I'm happy to kind of jump in. So uh, one of the things, you know, being an SEO person, somebody who had this experience, I was doing SEO for eight or nine years before I left my day job to do the, the cleaning business. Um, I was working for everything from a smaller uh, or larger agencies working with smaller businesses. There's one called Voice Digital that I worked for. Um, I was overseeing about a thousand small business customers and helping manage their SEO. Moved on to another company called iCrossing where I went from a thousand clients to just like one or two big ones. And I was working for uh, Microsoft, Starwood Hotels, PetSmart during my time there. Um, so I've seen the whole gamut of, you know, what a, you know, $200 SEO contract gets you and what a $100,000 SEO con contract gets you. Um, I was talking to one of my friends because, uh, you know, this happens to me a lot. People just say, hey, I'm a little confused. Can I just think about redoing my website? Can I talk to you about this? Um, and we talked for about two hours about his website and everything that he was doing with SEO. Um, and, you know, I was showing him this huge list of like, you know, your SEO person didn't do this and they didn't do this. And I would have probably done it this way. And then when it kind of all sort of wrapped up after two hours of talking, he was like, okay, so, you know, what did I, what did I get through this? And, and I kind of asked him like, okay, what are you, what are you paying? Um, and he was paying about $2,000 a quarter. He's got a very different business from ours. He's got a, a retail um, type business, got seven locations. So seven locations, $2,000 a quarter is really affordable for SEO. Um, and even though when we were looking at this, we kind of saw there were tons of opportunities for improvement, he was kind of getting what he was paying for. And I think that that um, is really the thing that uh, people miss a lot. Uh, you tend to think, I'm going to buy a thing. I'm going to buy SEO as my thing. And if I can get it for cheaper, I still get the SEO thing. So it's still going to be good. And I bought the thing and I did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, but it's not, yeah. it's not binary. It's not like buying a car or a widget or like an iPhone. Um, you don't want to just get it for as cheap as possible and you're going to have it. Um, there's a whole, whole gamut. I would almost assume um, that if you're buying a local SEO package, it should be somewhere between $300 to $500 per location. If you're buying a month, month or a month, yeah, yeah, okay, every month. Um, if you're buying an organic SEO package, I wouldn't really expect anybody to see any results unless you're in the $1,000 to $2,000 a month range. Um, and I've seen a lot of people that go and get these, and you know there's a lot of different factors. Nothing's black and white in SEO. Yeah. Um, that was one of the reasons these big companies would hire us to come in and talk um, was because, you know, they might know here's this whole list of, you know, SEO items that I got to work on, but they don't know what the impact of that is on their website. And it's different for everybody. So like we would look at, um, you know, a large website that had, you know, JavaScript footers or some weird technical thing that, you know, hurts its ability to transfer link juice. And this website, it's a really big deal and really bad. And on this website, they're doing it a little bit different. It's a little bit different scenario. So it doesn't really affect it as much. So everything's variable. Uh, and the reason I bring that up is because I was kind of saying, you know, 200 or 300 to 500 per location for local SEO. That's going to be really yeah. different if you're in New York City versus, you know, North Platte, Nebraska, or, you know, some other yeah. small town that's got 50,000 people. If you're in a small town with less competition, you can almost get away with doing the bare minimum. And we're talking instead of spending $500 a month, spending like $200 a year and see some really good results. Uh, so everything's, everything's variable. Um, so where I usually tell people to start, uh, and it best, my best kind of general advice is to put SEO on the back burner initially um, until you've sort of maxed out some other marketing channels. So for me, when I was getting started, Yelp is kind of becoming less prominent, less effective. But for me, when I first started, Yelp was a really big driver of my business. Um, and I happened to find out uh, 
about a year or two into that, that apparently uh, Scottsdale and Phoenix, where my business is located, is are like one of the biggest users of Yelp as a you know population. So turns out that that was a really good match for me. Perfect. Might not be the same thing in Cincinnati, for example. Um, but uh, you know, so I found that was the place where I got the cheapest return on my investment because uh, I was just starting out. So I just doubled down on that you know avenue until you get to the point where you're kind of plateauing, no matter how much more money or more time you put into, you know, in my case, my Yelp campaign, uh, I, I wasn't getting anywhere further. Um, and then I started pivoting that into, you know, okay, so I kind of maxed out this avenue. It's working really well. We're going to kind of set this over here. We're still doing it, um, but it's on autopilot. And now I'm going to start building out my Google paid campaigns. So uh, paid advertising through Google can be a little bit more effective because it doesn't take as much time. It's a shorter tail to ROI. And that's one of the big challenges with SEO that a lot of people get impatient about. Um, like I straight up had a friend um, who was really trying to rank in SEO and he was so frustrated because he'd been doing it for three months and was spending all this money and he wasn't getting anywhere. Um, but now, you know, whereas Five years ago, we could take a website and rank it in a couple of days. Now it takes all, like north of 12 months to, you know, to, to really push the needle for SEO and to get really, really good results. Um, so that's kind of one of the reasons that I, I sort of advise push it off as long as you can until you get to the point where you've got the other marketing channels set up that are working for you. And you can have those sort of fund this thing where you can put, you know, one or $2,000 a month into it until it starts to pay itself back. So you don't you don't need the money. It's it's you know, you you've got the budget to lose and then you can kind of spend the time um, working on that and not worrying about it. Because that's that's how long it takes. <laughs> um, so it, there really isn't like the right answer, which is why there's so much confusion around SEO. You'll mm -hmm. hear, I only spend three hundred dollars a month and my SEO guy is great. Yeah, right. well, you only have 50,000 people in your city and there's two competitors. That's yeah. why, right? right. Or yeah. I, I've been spending $800 a month and my SEO guy isn't doing anything. I can't get anywhere. Well, you live in Georgia and, yeah. you know, there's or Atlanta and there's like yeah. a million companies there. Mm -hmm. So, yep. And right, I, and so, quite a lot. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Ryan. What were you saying? That it happens a lot? Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of confusion around it, um, and I see it all the time. Uh, people saying I've got I'm spending two hundred dollars a month, and you know we're doing great. And other people that say I can't seem to spend enough to make this work, um, which makes it super fun and confusing. Uh, yeah, is time part of it though? Like if you live in a market that's fairly competitive, and if you say okay, realistically, it might take a year or more to to rank to get you know like on the front page. Um, is there uh, certain things that I could start doing today that maybe I'm not spending, you know, three grand a month, maybe I'm spending just part of that, but that's really the stuff that uh, needs to start happening now. So a year from now, I'm a lot closer to, to, to getting the results I'm looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for almost everybody that's, that's on this call, I know a lot of us are you know local service-based businesses. Um, my first kind of suggestion, and this would even be something that if you're not focusing on SEO, you can still just implement and get started, um, is what I like to call local SEO. And I say what I like to call because I've seen a lot of people define it different, um, but I kind of consider Google Maps to be my local SEO kind of box, right? And it's becoming more and more prominent, especially now when you search for something like home cleaning services or pest control, you see a nice little map three pack right on the uh, the top of the search results. And that's where most people are going to click. They can see your reviews. They know, you know, they kind of have an idea like, oh, this one's got a five star and so does this one. But this one's only got three reviews and it's got 250. So I'm going to click on this one. Like people like to engage with that because they get all the data that they, they want right away. Um, and most people are doing that on their phones now, which makes the map right. even that much more valuable. Yeah, and that's the other reason that SEO is getting harder and harder because if you're actually looking on your phone, um, so there's the two types of SEO, the local SEO and the organic. Um, the organic rankings are going to be the ones that are more expensive and more challenging to get. 
And if you're on your phone, you gotta scroll like through three or four different screens before you can even see them. Like you see the Google ads and you see the map and then there's gonna be something else and then your organic listing, right? So, um, you know, I always like people to focus on the organic or the uh, Google Maps portion because it's cheaper, it's easier, it's a little bit more hands off. Um, and you can, you can rank in there a little faster. Usually you can see results in about six months. Um, what I so that goes to your question, Ekaterina. So the six month thing, that is a real thing. Because a lot Brian, of people ask about that. And Brian's asking, you know, the top three things to focus on in SEO. So we just heard one. Yeah. So what, what I would do if I was starting fresh, uh, you claim your Google My Business listing. Um, so make sure you get that thing. Uh, get that claim. That's where Google sends you that postcard and you can build out your maps, you know, your map pack uh, listing. Um, you want to fill that thing out completely. You want your description in there. You want your, um, you know, a link to your website is crucial to have. Uh, you know, you want to get a couple of reviews. You don't, two rank, you don't need to have 200 reviews and it doesn't go off of the number of reviews. But what we've seen is if you have at least five, it tends to give a little bit more legitimacy and Google tends to rank those. Google will sometimes rank listings that have like two reviews. I've seen it happen, uh, but more often than not, you want to have at least five to 10. Um, so get five to 10 reviews, people that you know, it could be your cousin, it could be you know, your current customers. That's kind of the way, the way I like to go is just asking customers to leave us a review if they had a good experience. Um, it's kind of a classic tactic. Um, and then after that, um, you want to start building what are called citations. So a citation is anywhere your name, address, and phone number appear online. So another fun, you know, uh, SEO thing, uh, NAP, N-A-P, name, address, phone number. You'll hear that a lot if you're talking to SEO people. Um, so you want that name, address, phone number to appear as many places as you can online and um, to have it be consistent, like 100% consistent. So, you know, if you put a one in front of your phone number in this one, and, um, you know, the, the person that I was talking to the other day that my friend who was on the phone with for two hours, one of the issues that he had was each one of his, uh, his SEO company had built him citations, but they had different names for each one. So his was, you know, the name of his business, Phoenix slash Arcadia, which is a part of town here in Phoenix. And then the next one was Phoenix hyphen Arcadia. Um, so they were slightly different uh, for each iteration, which hurts the value of those, those citations. What I'm looking for is the more I see this information and the more consistent it is, the more I can assume that it's correct. So I'm gonna, high, I'm gonna raise this one up and show it a little bit more. So an example of like a really powerful uh, citation would be Yelp. Yelp is like one of the best citations you can get. Um, it counts for a lot of points on your, you know, kind of SEO scale there. And that's, that's you know, pretty much the kind of my go-to example because everyone's familiar with it. Um, but that Yelp is just a, you know, a fancy directory website. There are tons of these directory websites that you can uh, take advantage of. And the cool thing is they're relatively cheap to make a lot of them, um, to make a lot of these listings. So where I usually point people to, especially when they're first getting started, just because it's affordable and they do a lot of hand-holding, the UI is really easy, like anybody can go in, like any small business owner and, and do it themselves. UI? Yes, uh, <laughs> user interface. It's just, it's an easy to use website. Uh, my apologies. Uh, there I go putting on my SEO hat. Confusing. That's everybody. okay. I got a fast hand. We went about seventy seconds without, you know, an abbreviation. So that was probably right. Right. <laughs> it was time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unprecedented uh, abbreviations. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> but the All one right. I think is called uh, it's called Moz Local. So what this company does, and there are other companies that do something similar is a lot of these directory sites use a common database uh, called a directory aggregator. Um, and what'll happen is with Moz Local, they basically take your business information, they submit it to seven or eight of these uh, directory aggregators, and then all the other directories kind of grab that information, pull it into their system. So, you know, a more popular one would be something like um, 
Apple Maps. I believe Apple Maps gets a majority of their information from a company called Info Group. Nobody's ever heard of Info Group except for people like me, but it's one of these aggregators that Moz Local submits to. And, you know, just because uh, when you're not Yelp or Google My Business, business owners like us aren't going to be motivated to go put their information on Apple Maps because it's not the first thing that they think about. It's maybe the 10th or 11th or 20th or, you know, we never think about it because we've got to run a business, right? Never, yeah. So Moz Local helps with this because you can just submit your information in one place. I believe right now it costs about $120 a year. Um, and then they take that information wow. and distribute it. Right. And that the seems other really affordable. Yeah, and then what I've seen too from that, um, I think when I submitted my website, uh, you know, when I was first doing it, like, I don't know, five, six years ago, um, is I got about 150 citations from Moz Local. It takes about three to four months for that information to get distributed to all the different directories. Um, but that puts you you know, legs ahead of everybody else who didn't do that. Um, How do you know if you have these citations, Ryan? That is a little bit more complicated. Um, okay, never mind. Yeah. I'm going to pull you off track. I was just curious. Yeah, there's there's a there's a couple ways that I check. Moz Local has a really nice tool where you can just kind of put in your address and the name of your business, and it'll tell you if you've got the important things covered. Um, that's probably the easiest. The way I do it is a little bit more, you know, using URL parameters um, and uh, or not URL parameters, search parameters, and yeah, it's it's not worth anybody knowing really. So yeah. can you see what's on the screen here? We got one twenty nine, one ninety nine, and two ninety nine. Yeah. So what, what would you recommend, Ryan, for somebody starting out? Or like first do Google My Business, mm -hmm. then hire, maybe? Yeah, do Google My Business. Make sure it's linked to your website. Um, make sure you've got your name, address, and phone number on your website, and you talk about what you do on your website. I remember I had one client once that um, – we couldn't figure out why they weren't ranking. We were doing local SEO for them and we went to their website. They were like an Italian restaurant and the entire, like they had like 3000 words written on their website, which is like, Oh, this is great. Like tons of content. And then you start reading it and it's just about how like, Oh, we were like three guys in a bar and then we were doing this and we decided we want to start this bar. And it's like the whole history of why they started this bar. It doesn't say anything about what they serve, nothing about drinks or cocktails or happy hour. Or any, it's just like, like a total like ego run for this business owner. So we had to go back to him and say, Hey, look, like you guys sell pizza. So you got to talk about pizza a little bit on your website. And, and that was like, like do it. So <laughs> just make sure like you're cleaning houses or doing pest control. You talk about that in actual text on your website. That's okay. it's a small thing, but it's a huge help. Um, and then try to you work with a product like Moz Local. There are other companies that do this that so you can search around for. It might be a little cheaper. I like Moz Local because it's really easy to use. <clears throat> In terms of which package, I mean, I would probably just start with the basic. I haven't actually looked at these though. Um, you know, in quite a while, so I forget what's in each of them. But I remember last time I had to had to uh, pay for it again. I think I just did the the basic package, um, okay. which is that. Uh, we, we upgraded and, and we do the 299 a year and this is per location so for each branch we do that but the really cool thing about that I'm not, I'm not recommending or you know i don't know if you'd recommend or if i do this but it will take all your review sites and give you all of that feedback in one user interface one one screen so you've got google you've got facebook any other place you're getting reviews so you can respond to them and if you got multiple locations they're all in one place so if one person is like responding to reviews and that's through this here and you know you were talking about you know mm -hmm. the, your, your local seo um yeah, so you, I'm, I'm getting a mixed message here well so. that's so actually so and that's that's my fault because i wasn't as familiar with what these all did but that was going to be my next point um, is okay. you want to start measuring key performance indicators. And it sounds like that's what this upgraded package does, right? It helps you keep track of your reviews, respond to those. So there's a management aspect there. It's really easy to respond to them. And yeah. from a local SEO standpoint and the map pack and so forth is responding to a review, a, a positive thing. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing that I really like to do that I see almost no business owners doing like ever um, is just responding to reviews. Um, so one of my, my things that I do anytime I get a review, whether it's positive or negative, I make sure I respond to it with a keyword in there. Um, so if you, you know, Google my company, Tidy Casa, and just take a look at some of those reviews, I, every, you know, five-star review that comes up, I say, Hey, thanks so much. I'm really glad you enjoyed your house cleaning. Um, you know, we look forward to working with you again. Thanks so much. Uh, and I have, have something along those lines there. I'll even throw in an emoji here and there just to make it fun um, and try to make it seem natural. But, you know, don't shy away from responding to those. Like just don't think that the responding is only for negative reviews. You can also put keywords in there, which helps you. Um, I read a study where a guy did this uh, maybe three or four years ago before I left my day job um, working as an SEO was one of the things that we were kind of like talking about. And um, this really popular SEO blogger had gone out and found a uh, another business and started writing in the reviews and in responses to reviews. Like he had claimed a business that wasn't his and he was optimizing it as like a test. And the business owners had like no idea. It was really kind of funny. Um, Wow. We, said, I, we didn't build any links. We didn't do anything else except for respond to reviews with keywords in them. And they started ranking for their the keyword that they were trying to get them ranked for. And so good wow. for this person getting that help. But easy thing that anybody can do. All right. I should so, have a question now because I still am confused. So you were talking about Moz Local. And mm -hmm. what I heard from you was hire this company and they will get you citations. And then yeah. I heard sign up for this thing and you will do a lot of work. So are you doing the work or is that they, what I heard from Tom was if you sign up for it, you're the one that's going to do the work. They will give you some information and you'll have reporting and you'll, you'll be able to um, respond. So I'm getting a mixed message. Who's doing the work with Moz local, you, the business owner or the company? So Moz Local is going to do the deal with building you citations. That is definitely okay. not something that a business owner wants to do. It's okay. uh, incredibly time consuming and not worth anybody's time. So okay. Okay. You know, the majority of what they do is getting you citations. Um, Tom okay. was saying that we have another feature that will help you manage your reviews. And I was just jumping on what he was saying in terms of that. It's a really important thing to do to make sure you're responding and responding to the community. So there's no tool that's going to participate in the community for you. That's kind of your job as a business owner, or you, know, you can, you know, push it off to your manager maybe. Uh, but even, even where I am now with you know, our full-time manager running most of my day to day, I still get in there and respond to reviews. Um, for me personally, I don't have as many locations uh, to manage as Tom. Um, I've only got two, but uh, it's worth it just to have me logged in on my phone when something pops up. I just go in, hey, thanks so much. You really appreciate the review. Um, glad the home cleaning went well. Um, and that, that helps with the SEO portion. So really, Moz Local is going to help you on both sides. They're going to do some of it, but it also makes it easy for you to do your part. Mm -hmm. That's right. what I'm hearing. And then the big right? thing is, you know, when you're hiring an SEO company to do this, they're probably going to build just as many citations over a year, and they're going to charge you three hundred dollars a month. Where Moz Local, I think their top package is what was it two ninety nine or something? Three hundred dollars a year. A year. Um, the other thing is, so that re that reporting is really nice and important, and you'd probably want to continue paying for that. But if you only wanted the citations, the other thing that I tell business owners is. Um, Moz Local will try to get you to pay for it every year, and they are still providing a service in making sure that your information stays consistent, uh, which is part of the ranking process. But if you don't change anything, if you don't change your phone number or your address on your Google My Business page, there's really no point in going more than a year with Moz at that kind of base package. So without the reporting and the other stuff. Um, so yeah. if you know, you're just getting started, spend the 120, let it run for know, 11 months and then turn off the auto renew, you're going to be just as good in terms of SEO rankings. Okay. Okay. That's, that's great. Tom, did you have a question? We talk about keywords and sometimes I think that we maybe don't spend enough time really talking about what a keyword is, why it's important and what keywords should we 
be using, like in the context of reviews, you know, I guess, you know, Tidy Casa, thank you, Mrs. Jones, Tidy Casa appreciates, you know, has many yeah. happy house cleaning clients in Crestdale. Yeah. And you're kind of jamming them all in there. I mean, you can go as crazy as you want on that, right? Yeah, yeah you can. And for local SEO, you don't really have to. So you don't have to, you know, sneak the, the city name in there. That's not really necessary. Um, but you want to get just sort of the root of that keyword. So for me, I'll use home cleaning, house cleaning, deep cleaning, spring cleaning. Um, glad your move out cleaning went well. Um, that's usually what I say, like, hey, glad your house cleaning went well. I mean, that's, that's really all I need to get in there. When it comes to local, and this is kind of one of the things that I like about local SEO for small businesses, is you don't have to put as much thought into, should I rank in Mesa or Phoenix or Scottsdale? These are all like cities within Phoenix metro area that are like touching. They're really close to each other. So it's sometimes confusing for a lot of businesses who are close to where I am to know which city to go after for their, their keywords. But with local SEO, it's going to naturally build out a area for you that it's going to target uh, based on how many citations you have and reviews and you know keyword densities and all this other stuff. But the real important thing to know is you're going to see naturally you're going to get way more customers close to where your headquarters is versus farther away um, because Google's doing that work for you. They're not. You don't need to put you know home cleaning in Phoenix to rank in Phoenix just home cleaning as sort of the base keyword um, because google knows where you are google knows where you are they're going to do that work for you okay. Okay. i really like the local seo is you build the citations you make sure everything's set up right you know you've got your google my business listing it's built out get your citations and then you're pretty much um good to let google do most of the rest um I, we do have four things that i don't want to lose here um Honestly, okay. yeah. um, let me just hit these real quick, make sure that we don't lose them. So yeah. Brian had asked for the top three things. We got two. We got Google My Business, and that's building the citations. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're going to give us the third, but I'm just reminding us we don't want to lose that. And then somebody asked about blogs. Are they helpful? I thought maybe that's like a quick answer, yes or no? No, not a quick answer. <laughs> okay, then, then go ahead and hold on and we'll hold on to that. There's an order list. We'll just flip right through them or at least take Say it again, off. Tom? I've got them all here. Let me just put them up and we can take okay. them. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I like this because this always comes up. You know, people feel like they're spending a lot of money and they don't know what they're getting. Mm. Um, and they just get a bill. And you ask the question, you know, what's this $3,000 bill for? And it's like, well, we'd explain it to you, but it's complicated. So I'm just yeah. this. Yeah, so it's a great question. And I think um, the, there's, there's, I think the, the kind of to uh, go after sort of the root of the question is, is it important to know how much time they're spending? If they're getting you results, for me in my business, I don't care. I just care about those, those, Key performance indicators, once again, KPIs, um, unprecedented amount of acronyms here. Um, I care about the KPIs. So that was kind of the next thing I sort of had on my list here to talk about was you want to define those early. That can be something you talk to your SEO person about. I personally like to kind of pick my own uh, because it, without defining them, this is another issue that you run into with SEOs and I'm guilty of doing this to customers as an SEO in the past. Um, if you have enough data and SEOs are gonna collect or they should be collecting as much data as possible. So they've got your Google search console, they've got um, your Google analytics, they've got you know your keyword rankings, they've got all this data so they can tell whatever story they want to. Um, so you might go to them and say, you know, what am I getting for this? And they'll say, oh, well, your, your keyword rankings are up, even though your traffic's down. So we're doing a good job. Or they'll say, you know, uh, your, your conversions are down. You're, you're not making as much money, but hey, your site traffic's going up. Um, so what I like to do is pick one or two things to focus on. My kind of go-to for SEO, for local business and spe specifically, um, is impressions. So 
if you log into your Google My Business account, um, which anybody should be able to do if you've gone through the process of claiming your Google My Business, you can go in and see that. Um, and just look at the impressions. Am I seeing more this month versus last month? Um, I mean, there's nuances in there too, like seasonality and other things to keep in keep into account. You know, if you have like a terrible hurricane, your numbers are probably going to be down because people aren't thinking about house cleaning or pest control when, you know, there's a hurricane. Um, but, you know, keeping that stuff in mind, are your numbers up or down? Um, the other thing to keep in mind is there's a certain point where SEO plateaus. You're spending a bunch of money and you're getting better and better and better and better. And then you just kind of hit the market cap. No matter how much money you spend, you're not going to get any better. You're just in maintenance mode right now. And sometimes that's okay too, as long as, you know, the SEO services are still paying for themselves. Um, so at the end of the day, I don't know how to tell how much work your SEO person is doing. Um, you know, unless you're bringing them in house, you're not really like having them, uh, you know, clock in and out. Um, and you're probably not paying them by the hour unless you're doing one of these hundred thousand dollar SEO contracts. Like I used to do back in the day because we were selling consulting hours. So we tracked everything. Um, for most small businesses like us, when you're paying one or two grand, you just got to, Focus on those key performance indicators that you, you know, the things you want to measure. Like, well, what are they, Ryan? Like, we got impressions. That's one. Google what my are the top three, maybe? Google My Business impressions is the number one. That's for the local okay. portion. If you're doing right. organic SEO, you want to focus on Google Analytics or site traffic, specifically from search engines. So that's another thing site that people from Google. Google. Okay. email can it'll do really good and look at extra thousand things and like oh we got more people but they didn't come from search so search engine traffic to the website specifically okay um, and uh, keyword rankings is another one and the reason i throw keyword keyword rankings. Rankings there so keyword rankings especially now are incredibly variable based on where you are geographically whether you're on a mobile device versus a desktop like these things change a lot um, but just keeping track of a general trend there um, can help paint a picture when things aren't going well. So it's probably not something that I would focus on a ton. I would focus on uh, Google Analytics data and traffic more than anything. Um, and then if you need to kind of go and look like at another metric, you know, you want to be tracking keyword rankings. Um, so if you're hiring an SEO, if they don't know how to do all this stuff or don't want to provide you data, you go somewhere else. <laughs> but so it sounds like Really, you don't need to know. So in answer to Leslie's question, it doesn't really matter how much time or effort they're doing. Just get these three keywords and we want to see those numbers moving, going up, 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 right. up. And that, and that goes to the, the thing we were talking about earlier, that it takes time. So, you know, you I said it takes about a year to really have some good results from SEO. Yeah. You don't want to spend $2,000 a month for a year and be like, well, this guy didn't work out. So you want to... <laughs> keeping track of that and you want to see movement so we don't need to go from zero to 60 in you know a week but we want to see if i have a hundred visitors this month i want to see 150 and then 200 and then 300 and usually there tends to be a j curve where it'll slowly rise and then it'll start shooting up um, and that's kind of what you want to see um, so even month over month maybe it plateaus or it doesn't go up a ton that that can be okay for month or two, um, but you want to sort of steadily see those numbers go up. So you just described, I guess, what some people call like exponential growth. Is that what you would expect to see at some point when it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not exponential to infinity, but it's usually exponential um, up until like a plateau <laughs> where you've just sort of market saturation. There's no more, no more human beings out there that are searching for this thing in your area that aren't finding you. Um, but it looks like nothing's happening and then you kind of get that hockey stick where it, it shoots up. I mean, you, you should see steady growth. So it should never be completely flat, but there is a bit of a hockey stick. And that's because, you know, in organic SEO or in Google Maps, um, the first box is going to get like 40% of the clicks. And I don't quote me on these numbers. I haven't looked at it in a long time, but it's something around this. It's like 40% get the first uh, the first result gets clicked on 20% of the second result and then like 5% of the third, you know, so there's disproportionately more traffic going to the first couple of rankings. 
uh, in any search result, which is why you know you'll see it kind of jump up and down or climb up fast. So if I'm searching, if I'm searching for an SEO company, does their ranking mean anything? Should I think that the SEO company that ranks at the top is the best? I mean, not always. Uh, it's a weird thing with SEO companies, but I find most of them do not do their own SEO. Um, I think there's a general consensus in the industry. Like, it's a good sign if they are, but I don't think it's a bad sign if they're not, um, especially for small businesses. If you're looking at an SEO company that um, is maybe two or three people, I probably wouldn't expect them to do any of their own SEO or do very limited SEO. Um, especially if they're new. So like if you had somebody like me who was coming off of working on, um, you know, as a consultant for one of these big companies, I still knew how to do SEO and I was really good at it, but I didn't have a company of my own that was ranking for anything at that time. Um, what I would want to see, and if you did want to ask, you know, it's good to see some references. They should be able to point to one or two of their clients who are ranking. Wow. Um, that's probably the bigger takeaway. I don't think I would go with a company that just has, you know, one or two people right now um, or doesn't have clients to show. So that would probably be more it. Just look for those referrals, just like, you know, looking for a lawyer. Anything else? It's kind of like being in the house cleaning business if your own home's dirty. I, yeah, I <laughs> almost never, I intentionally leave my house a little dirty for demo cleaning. So, you know, people come over and it's like, wait, don't you own a cleaning business? It's like, yeah, but you know, they're busy doing other stuff. You know, I'm, I'm still there. making money cleaning my own house. Yeah, don't get high on your own supply. You know what I mean? Huh. All right, so I want to get back to some of these questions here because sure. we, you know, we run out of time really fast here. So uh, is this a fast answer? Does the age of the website matter? Uh, the age of the website, does matter, but not, I mean, everything matters a little bit, uh, okay. but it, it's, it's all subjective, right? Okay. So yeah, older websites tend to rank a little bit better. Um, there was a question up, up there about blogs and I can answer that one really quick. Um, okay. Do help. The more content you have about a subject on your website, the higher it's going to rank or the overall authority of that website's going to be built up. Um, the long answer is Writing a blog helps a little. Writing a blog and promoting a blog helps a lot. So you really want to spend about 40% of your time writing, 60% of your time promoting and getting that blog out there, building backlinks to it. Um, so yes, I actually have a friend. The only thing he does is he goes on Help a Reporter Out to get backlinks, and he writes blog posts and promotes them all over the place. And that's the, like the only thing he does for SEO, and he ranks like nationally for like really big keywords. So yes, but most companies aren't spending that type of time or money on their blog. And if you're not, then I would almost say don't do it. I don't blog for my business, and most other small okay. businesses aren't. So if your competitors aren't, you really don't have to. It it can be really expensive for not a lot unless you're going like really really big. So unless you're making the the big commitment. Yeah, I mean, you really want to be spending a lot on like really good content writers, really well researched articles, and you know, find things that are people are going to link back to, um, you know, kind of link baby stuff, and that can really help. But that's really it's not it's not an easy task. Okay, that that's great information. Uh, let's see uh, another one real quick. Okay, so yeah, getting back to Brian's question. He says his, he asked for the top three things that you would recommend. We have the Google My Business, mm -hmm. then build the citations, mm -hmm. and then kind of that whole getting um, uh, re reviews and all of that. Mm -hmm. I, I kind mm -hmm. of read that. Yeah, okay. Another thing I like small businesses to do, even if you're not trying to do organic SEO or local SEO on a continuous basis, like say you just started out, you just want to put a little bit of money in here uh, and then focus on it again later. Having an SEO person do a one-time on-site SEO service for your business can be very helpful. And that's basically going to be when an SEO person is going to go in, they're going to update your meta, your meta tags and your title tags and clean up the HTML, make your website run a little bit faster. I mean, the whole point of SEO is to optimize. Um, you know, that just means making a thing as useful as possible. Um, so it can, it can be really worth it to spend you know, one or two grand to have a professional SEO come in and just do the onsite all the way through, clean everything up. 
Um, and, then, and what's that called, Ryan? If I wanted to order that from somebody, what would I call it? One time on site. It would be on site SEO. So I just need a one time on site SEO, you know, okay. or update. Because um, what a lot of SEO companies will do is when they hire, when you hire them for their organic SEO, um, and when you see somebody who is charging you like two hundred dollars a month that's probably all they're doing is they're doing a one-time on-site SEO thing because at $200 a month, they really can't spend any time on your project and still make money. Um, usually the way the, the money works out in SEO, it, SEO people are relatively expensive. Um, so for every like hundred bucks you're spending with them, they're going to spend maybe 45 minutes or they could afford to spend 45 minutes on your project, but they're going to try not to. <laughs> Um, that's why, you know, you don't really see results until you're at like a thousand or two thousand dollars a month. Um, so get get somebody to just kind of go through one time and do an on-site SEO audit to your website. That can be really helpful. Um, most SEOs will be able to know how to do this. Link building is a little trickier. I'd be a little pickier with that, but um, it can be good. Just have an SEO person do some keyword research for you update some things on your website and just, just kind of get it a little fine tuned. And that'll also help your, that'll play into everything else you do. It'll help your local SEO. It'll help your social media posts. If they're, you know, updating things right and adding, you know, Facebook tags to it. Um, all these little things kind of play into everything else. So that's, that's a pretty good thing to do as like a one time, you know, clean up my website thing. So you're describing though, like it's an integrated system. You got to get your website right from a, from a technical standpoint, the on site, but mm -hmm then it kind of spawns out into this larger thing called digital marketing with your social media and your reviews and anything so, else that, that, that you can get to through a browser, I guess. Right. And, that, and it's a really good insight. Um, and, you know, basically what Google's been really good at doing is taking a look at the internet and the websites that are out there and seeing which ones are the most useful and pulling all these different signals and, um, ranking based on those. So if your website loads fast, it's not a huge signal for Google, but it's a signal. So two websites completely the same. If this one loads faster, it's going to rank higher, right? Um, you know, there are some reasons for that, but you know, one of the things you see is if your website loads faster, you're going to get less bounces. If And that's just when somebody goes to your website, gets frustrated, it's loading too slow, and then leaves. The less bounces you have, the more sales you're going to have. So, you know, it's an SEO thing, but it's also a user interface thing. So that's going to help your email campaign. When you're sending them to your website landing page, they're not going to bounce. They're going to buy, you know. So all these things kind of play together. Same thing with, uh, you know, your Facebook page. They, there's social signals on there. People are interacting with it. And those feed into Google as well. Like everything right now kind of feeds in. And that's why SEO has gotten so expensive is because it's such a big hub kind of touching a little bit of everything that Google looks at. So if I'm, using, if I'm using Google or Facebook, either one, I guess one thing that they both want to do is make money off of me. They want me to click on stuff that makes them money. But secondly, it sounds like it, they're trying to help make it as productive and as enjoyable experience for me as possible. So they want to give me quality content and they want it to be fast and they don't, you know, if it has broken links and stuff, they're less likely to send me to it. So that's where all the on-site there, everything yeah. we can do to yeah. make a better experience for people on our websites going to earn us points with Google. Right. And it, yeah, and it all, it all kind of plays in. Google's got two constituents, right? There's the business owners like us who are actually paying them money um, to advertise. But then if they, even if we pay them money, if the user who clicked on that ad has a bad experience, then they're going to be less likely to continue using Google. So Google has to make both parties happy. And the best way to do that is they rank higher, whether it's, you know, Google paid ads or SEO, they're going to rank higher the website that's easier to use, loads faster, makes more sense. You know, um, they, they take right. all these things into account. Right, because they're, they're constantly having a balance too. It, it's not going to be a, like one answer or the other. That makes sense. Oh, good. We got, thanks you for getting up, Karen. Take a question on pay-per-click. Any feedback on companies who do SEO and want a certain commission for paid Google ads, meaning they want um, to get paid when you close a deal? Is that, is that pay-per-click? Is that what you, uh, you're 
I think a paid Google ads is either like Google guarantee or um, I think what I'm saying after is, is commission. Um, so I so I think what it is is we're running Google ads and we pay a commission to people when they close deals for us. I don't know if Karen can give some. We're a little confused, Karen. Give us a little bit more. Maybe you could pull up Leslie's question while we're waiting for Karen to give us a little bit more info, Tom. All right. My guy can't write right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so Leslie's saying that her, I'm assuming her web guy or SEO guy can't write great content. And every time we're going to the location, I have to write a bunch of content that is expected. Uh, it's a lot of work for me. Um, I think it's a lot of work for me and time. Um, yeah, uh, it's a challenge for a lot of SEOs too, um, in that, you know, as an SEO person, I really know how to fix your website and make it load super fast. And that's kind of what you want me to do. But I don't necessarily know anything about fixing roofs or repairing air conditioners. So am I going to be the best person to write about that? Um, and one of the biggest things with content, like I was saying about the blogs earlier, you want it to be good quality content. If I'm you know, going on WikiHow and just kind of copying those ideas onto your website, it's not really going to be great or super insightful type content. Um, so that can be a challenge. That said, you don't, you don't have to write that. You can find somebody who is a good content writer and pay them to do that for you. That's probably what I would suggest. Um, what I would kind of expect that experience to be like is just to have them interview you about this content that you're writing so you can provide them with some insights that are going to be, you know, helpful and good quality. And then they can kind of take that and turn it into the 500, 750 words that your SEO person is telling you. Yeah, um, you're right. Whatever dog um, paying Google ads. It's very common that, um, I mean, I wouldn't consider this a commission, um, but this is sort of the fee structure that a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, marketing people use who are doing pay per click. Um, I don't have, I don't really have any opinions on it. Um, I think twenty percent is actually pretty good. Uh, when I was working at Gannett Local, we were charging thirty to thirty-five percent. Uh, and one of the things that you should see is. Um, with that professional managing your paid ads, the price per acquisition should go down. Um, so if you did it on your own, it might cost you $120, $200 to get a new customer. And you know, in the cleaning business, a really good lead, at least in my area, is around $40, $50. A great lead would be like $20 per lead. And when I say per lead, I mean, you know, person that, you know, lands on your web pages, calls your phone, so you get a chance to close them, right? Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you, they're, you're spending $1,000 a month and they're charging you 200, it's really not that bad a deal. And the reason that a lot of paid uh, ad professionals do it this way is because it kind of scales. They can get paid more for the larger budgets because the larger budgets are more work. Um, so, you know, if you're doing 10 grand in ad spend, they'll charge you two. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a bad deal. We're we're right on, up on the hour. We're out of time. You got 30 seconds. Chat yeah. bots. Do Chat they bots smart? <laughs> yes, if you can figure out how to use it and make money off of it, but I, I haven't really found the application for... Uh, or cleaning. I think Tom probably knows more about this. I think uh, we had some conversations about chatbots at some point. Yeah, and the thinking is that more and more there's a preference for that as opposed to filling out lead capture forms and whatnot. But we'll save that for another day. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning business today, if you haven't subscribed right here, it is just super, super easy. Email, first name, last name. You get our newsletter, which is coming out about every week now. And uh, there's a lot of stuff happening in the cleaning industry. You want to stay uh, caught up with that. All of the links and resources that we share for smart business moves are in this uh, link. And I just posted that in the chat. We're uh, pretty much good for today. Um, tomorrow, Matt Rick is going to be with us. We're going to be talking about 
PPP and SBA and EIDL and a whole other set of different acronyms. <laughs> Unprecedented. I, I agree with Brian. Uh, with the, this was great information. You did an oh, excellent you. job of making a really, really hard subject or confusing or convoluted subject seem really palatable. So uh, you did a good job. Oh, I really appreciate it, Brian. Yeah. I have a feeling we were just scratching the surface. We could probably do this for several more hours, and <laughs> hopefully you can come back soon, and we can, huh? I'm, I'm there. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. It's been great. It's always nice talking to everybody and, uh, you know, just getting to nerd out about SEO. Like, all I talk about is cleaning now, so <laughs> it's fun for me. This was awesome. And UI. I got a new acronym, UI. Your interface. Yeah, I like it. Thank well, you. Well, thanks again, Ryan. <laughs> hey, I'll take care. See you tomorrow at 5 Eastern. Have a good one, everybody.